Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So again today I'm working on my little panel for my rice bag. What I want to do in today's video is just put the final touches on, the little details. At the moment it's very simplistic, which I still like it. I think it's, um, you know, perfectly fine. But I just feel like I could embellish a little bit more. So what did I do for homework? I finished the dragonflies. I got a damp cloth then and just gave it a bit of a brush and those uh, chalk lines just disappeared beautifully. I've gone around the outer edge of the blue piece with the blue cotton just to make sure it doesn't fray to bits because it's a very loose weave. I haven't yet gone around this edge, but I do want to just to sort of protect it a little. And I have gone around the um, beige piece. I found this little cotton and I thought, well, that'll do, do the trick. And I'll probably just use white on that up there. But I thought I'm going to just now come back and I want to have a look at some little scrappy bits to put on there. I don't think I need any of these. See, I think this is too big of a design would be better as a panel on it. I do like this denim toned one to bring a lighter blue in. So that's a possibility. I have these scraps left as well, but they're from bits that are on there. I probably could add them to, you know, bring a color across. So that bit has potential. I don't think I need him. There's not a lot of spots to put pieces when you've got this stitching happening. I could put a little piece there. See what I mean? It's just gonna break up the boxiness of the design. I'm gonna put these bigger pieces away. Let's have a look at white. Some little morsels here from a previous project. So maybe, maybe we could pop a couple of those on. Still feel like I'm a bit boxy. That's a cream. I like the white. It does lift a little bit. Anything else there of interest in that little pile? Not really. It's a bit of an unusual pack. Some of these fabrics, like, I wouldn't say that's Japanese. I don't know. I sort of, yeah, you see, look, we've got a bit of lace in here. So this pack I got from Bitten by the Bug is just general white morsels. I promised myself I wouldn't bring lace into it. Isn't that a pretty? No. Put it away. Do like that little bit. I do like that little morsel. All right, let's have a look through these. So they're very similar to what I've got, or just wrong. What's an unusual little? That's a classic design in this style of um, stitching. If I could find a little template that had that on it, that's just classic. That's got potential, especially if I find it, found, find it, found a template that would suit it. That's that little bit. Oh, I've got little bits. I don't want to lose any of my little bits. I sort of don't feel like indigo fabric suits this project. I sort of feel like that's a different, different look. I've got a grey here. Maybe I can bring some grey into it. see it and at the moment I'm not seeing it I 
do like this one. I really feel like I could do a bit of stitching with this, this pretty piece. And even that could have some embellishing done on it. Oh, there's just not enough hours in the day. Here's a plain blue. Maybe I've got enough textures and I just need a plain pop of colour. So if I did use this one on another panel, that would blend. Don't know about this grey. But I do like this, but maybe I'm just attracted to the design. Just want to keep it. <clears throat> Maybe I do. I need a bit of scissors. I feel like I could probably do something like that yeah I like that I definitely like the cream dragging across and I think I like this little pop of this denim -y blue because that then allows me to bring this piece in at a later date as a bigger piece and it's just a case of do I want to how much of the line I want to cover and I think that's I think that's it let's just put a pin in that and what I might do is um, how would I stitch that I could overcast stitch around it so it picks up on that I like that there too and I think it'll just have some stitching through now no no see that's a lovely little piece nope 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 I'm wondering if I so I had thought of putting that there, that little morsel. What do I do? Get it there. No, it's a bit lost, isn't it? Hmm. All right, let's have a look through this pile and see if anything catches the eye. Oh, is that beautiful? That should be over there. That could go over there. So here's some dark indigo. Uh, it's sort of, I feel like that's just not right. I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to match in something that's, they're beautiful colours too. one way of being brave and getting indigo in is that I use a morsel I, I just know yeah, this is pretty too it's a softer blue I do like that what if this piece became that piece yeah I like that better I like that better and what I might do is cut it a fraction taller see this blue line on the bottom here I will turn it around so we get the pale onto there the blue lines obvious this then comes through there Yep. 
maybe that no no I don't like it <laughs> I like that better I don't know why but I do and I like it sort of in that position I think Sort of looks like we're trying to repair something. Does that make sense? I sort of feel like I could have something else. I, I like the white. And I think just some stitching. It'll be subtle. <clears throat> you know, these sorts of tones would be great for the, the tabs. But I just, I don't know if I can bring myself to bring indigo in. I wonder if I could take pieces over as well. You know, if we do this exposed seam, we don't stitch it in. Well, we're not going to now. I'm putting effort into the edging. We could put some pieces over to the next piece. That'd be a bit of fun. I think I'll leave it at that at the moment. Let's thread up. Sort of trying to um, pair it back a bit. I'm uh, very tempted just to, you know, go for it and layer and layer. But there's an element of just back off a little bit and let maybe the stitch be done first before you put more fabrics on. And I'm thinking this might actually be a boro stitch where we just stitch it down. You could also, um, for a different effect, turn the edge of all these scraps over so that you get rid of that raw edge. It is very fiddly, but if you iron them and then, you know, turn them and stitch them, it's very doable, but I find it quite tedious. I sort of prefer a more of a just lay it down and stitch it look. Having said that, the threads do worry me a little, so I do find that I do overstitch a lot of my raw edges. Just for the piece keeping its integrity a little bit, because there's nothing worse than having a gorgeous piece and it's quite a coarse weave and it's just disintegrating. Especially hessians and things like that. So I'm going to go past it, I think. If I can catch corner down yeah that's good and then I'll come back down trying to keep it as straight as possible we'll fiddle with that a little bit more I think Got to decide where we have that tassel, that selvage. Gonna try and weave my needle in so that I get as straight as I can because the needle sort of ensures that you get that straight edge when you do the weaving of it through the fabric. If you do more of a stab stitch one at a time, you tend to be a bit more wonky. I find I am anyway. So I'm just going to you can just do layers upon layers of stitching on these things. How much time do you want to spend on it? I got my mat back too. I shredded my table so that I could cut using that big green board and have my big ruler and the knife and you know when we were started this little series and then before I knew it I was filming again and filming again and I sort of didn't reinstate my nice wall mat. So I took the time to set my table up this morning. 
It's good to have it back. Okay, so I'm going to remove that little guy for now. <clears throat> so I can just get this stitched down. I'm hoping by the end of this video, we will have this piece ready, completed. And then we can start on the next one. Here comes Casper. Good morning, Casper. The door's actually closed, so he's going to have to push a little harder. Mm, that's a bit crooked. I'd have it undo that stitch. <clears throat> I was weaving the needle through the fabric and I stopped and I can see the result is a crooked stitch. It probably would be under that next piece, but, you know, let's try our hardest <laughs> to make it look half okay. It's still a bit crooked, but it's okay. That's very good. For goodness sakes. It's got to be done, done. Now I've broken the thread, so it's got caught and gone all yucky. picked too many times and my cotton has now lost its nice um, luster and firmness that the manufacturer creates when they first do it on the looms so I'm going to finish this thread And get ourselves a new one. I'm definitely not worried about the integrity of the sides of the bag because um, yeah I think I think it will hold beautifully. Some little threads there that can be Snipped off. Another fabric that frays very easily. But this will this will certainly hold it all. Oh goodness. Forgot the knot. Oh, it's gonna be a good day today. Poor Casper, I can hear him. He can't get in. So he must have sat there a bit, thought about it, and then has gone, no, I'm out of here. And take a bit of tension off because it'll pucker. So I can't pull that thread too hard because you get that funny puckered look. So you've got to be a little gentle, soft of hand. Yeah, that's better. Let's come down the other side. Just gently rocking the needle through the fabric. Still haven't found a suitable cherry blossom. So I'm still thinking about all that. I do like the idea. It does concern me that if this bag ends up on the shelf, the cherry blossom versus the dragonfly, who will be seen and who won't be? So I think if it's going to be shelved, you really need to have a good think about 
what side is visible and then what you do on the other sides. I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking it. Probably am. Okay. One more stitch. And that is crooked. Let's try that again. Go back out the hole. That's better. All right, so let's have a little look now. This piece, is it the right size? Where's its location? Where do we put this little fringy bit? Do we sneak down on the piece? Do we stay high? Do we go higher? Hmm, am I overthinking it? Do we go this way? Sort of like it like that. Sort of feels like it's connected to this. That feels like it's very geometric. Which I don't mind either. And I think the fringe has got to be down. And I think I am going to put it up there. It looks like a tab. Like something's connecting that. Yeah, let's do it. So where's my thread? I believe it's actually underneath all that. So I'm going to come up and just do a little invisible stitch there. That'll hold it. And I'm going to head over here with a couple more little invisible stitches. And then... I'm going to start my running stitch again. I might keep it in line with the one underneath, actually. That would look like it's meant to be. And not an add-on. Yeah. I'm going to go through and line it up with the stitch underneath. That looks pretty cool. That's one way of making it look like it's part of the background and then I can come down here and run back through and meet up with the other one on the other side I like that it's really integrated it into the background but yet it's still on the foreground that's a bit tricky There's a lot of layers here. The little fingers are getting a bit sore. There we go. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that little morsel. I won't do another row, I don't think, because A, it doesn't line up with the robe underneath. So that sort of ruins that little tricky... Casper's got the door open. He's done it. He's pushed. Hello, pussy. How are you this morning, puss? Is it breakfast time? I'm feeling peckish myself, Casper. So I might just stitch this little guy. How will we stitch him? We could... Do a running stitch through him like so. We could go around the edge. I'm thinking we go around his edge, to be honest. Like an overcast stitch. Oh, the knot. The knot, girl. The knot. Put the blooming knot in it. So we're just going to whip around the outer edge with a whip stitch or an overcast stitch. 
few different names depending on what culture is doing the stitch is what I usually find. If you see a, a name of a stitch, you're thinking, oh, well, what's that? That's new. Then you start watching it and you're like, oh, that's back stitch. That's, you know. This really looks like this fabric's been patched. Some um, morsels have been... I'm so tempted to put some lace on this. Mm. Do I corin it? Or do I leave it as classic as I can? I definitely wouldn't be a doily. That's sort of not... Oh, I don't know. Oh, I feel you're all yelling at the TVs and I can't hear you. <laughs> so I don't know what to do. It's that little piece of lace that was in amongst it. That's what's drawing me in. I really like the flower design. That right there. Let's just have a little looky at that while I keep stitching. If you cut out just a little flower, it would corinne it. It's not scallopy, it's lines. It's like the lace is very pretty. Hey, Casper, what do you think? Wish I had a big piece of that. I could see potential for that in many projects. Am I just going to ruin a nice little snippet of lace because I want one flower? You know what I mean? Put the lace away, for goodness sakes. Try and stay true to the project, girl. Stop going off down another rabbit hole. I think I can do something with this image here. This sort of feels like I could duplicate it and I would get that lacy effect by exploring that fabric there. It's very pretty. So I think... I think I will still get my feeling of floral. Even bamboo would be lovely to stitch in. You could do a, a panel in there with bamboo. That'd be really nice. Oh, look, I just spotted something in my basket over there. Look at this. Look at this. Sort of reminds me of those flowers. Oh, my goodness. Knot it off, girl, before you go off on a tangent. Like, it seriously is way too big for the project this particular project but boy that flower there and that what a gorgeous combination mm. anyway stay focused girl now what else do we need to do to this um I don't know I sort of like it Let's just do some invisible stitch on there before I forget. I do like how this is clean and not cluttered. So to add a little morsel over there, as much as I'm tempted, I'm tempted to add something in here too, but I don't know. I'm just gonna run a little invisible stitch through here. So I don't want 
is flapping around. So I'm just going to dodge through there. A couple little stitches. See how a selvage is just a great little piece. You know, it's... So there's a little bit off of there. If you haven't seen the previous videos, you're wondering what the hang is she talking about? When I trimmed this piece off of the bigger piece, oops, I'm hooked around his little eyes. Um, this little morsel is left, and I didn't didn't bin it. Okay. So that's not going anywhere now with those few little stitches. I might just come up over here because I do want to do some stitching around this outer edge just to secure that fabric. I should have done it off camera, but get it done. Get it done. Won't take long. And I guess I need to decide, is does it need anything else? Is it okay as it is? Don't go crazy. I really feel like I should be going crazy. I really feel like I need a floral element. My eyes are wandering across my table to baskets and boxes of bits and pieces from previous projects. And it's like, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I can get my fix and make another bag that has more of a florally, you know, lacy, shabby chic. This one's all about a Japanese one. So just control yourself, girl. I think once I get the um, cherry blossoms out of my system, I think it'll be okay. I'll feel, feel like it does have... Hello, Casper. He's just stood on his two back legs and put his paws on my lap if to say, can I come up there? No, pussy cat, you're a distraction, and I'm trying to focus. Another thing we need to decide is what fabric's going to go on the base of our little bag. I think that would be just one piece, I'm thinking. And maybe do boro stitch backwards and forwards to secure it to the base of the rice bag. That'd be really pretty. Maybe one or two just little morsels of fabric just to give it some interest. But it's never really seen because it's, you know, the bottom. Maybe I can find a fabric that's not as fancy as these Japanese ones because they've got a lot of texture and they're just beautiful. And to have it on the bottom of the bag sort of feels like it's a little bit of a waste. Maybe I can find just a blue or a bay, no, a blue um It's just going to be a pain in that thread. I need to end it off. Yeah, maybe I can find a blue fabric that can just be the base and then use some boro stitch so as if it is turned over and looked at, the stitching will be the feature. So I'm thinking along those lines for the bottom square because remember they're all squares. Okay, let's just get the last of this done and then I know it's done. So just doing this whip stitch or like I said, overcast stitch around the edge. Oh, the 
goodness sakes. Oh, gosh. Starting the change of seasons is really kicking in here. So as cold as Brisbane gets, which really is not that cold. If we're lucky, we get a five degrees. It's not very long. We get three days of winter and then it's sort of quite a mild cool. Enough to put a cardigan on and a pair of jeans and socks. But it's not like the southern states. They just seem to get a longer period of winter and more intense. Some areas get snow, but they're usually the mountain areas, which is too low and close to the sea level to get that. It's starting to cool down here. It's beautiful. I love it because you get to pull out the blankets and snuggle down and watch TV with a quilt on your lap. doesn't happen very often because it's usually, you know, balmy summer. Which seems to be nine months of the year here. It's not as bad as living in the tropics. We do get a, a cool off. Where my dad's farm is, is a lot cooler. He's dropping to the zeros and the three degrees. They don't get um, snow or anything like that, but it gets that blustery, cold, westerly winds from the centre of Queensland, centre of Australia. There we go. The perimeters are done. My morsels are done. Do I need something up here just a little just a little bit I don't know and if I do put it what do I stitch it in oh, I just feel like I need something down here just to balance it it sort of feels like there's a lot happening up here Am I just doing it for the sake of it? Probably. That little piece went there. I do like it. I'm doing it. Yeah, I know what you're saying. That girl, she just doesn't stop it where she should. I might make it small so it just peeks through doesn't take away from that design and there's just a pop of something there. Or do I put it up here? And that one down there. Mm. I like it. I like it, but what would I stitch it with? I've got a big thread. Is it just going to overpower it? How do I make that look like it's actually cool? Well, I'm going to have a go. If it looks silly, what have we lost? A precious piece of fabric that I'm probably wanting to keep forever. Let's see if I can make this look like maybe put an X there yeah let's do an X let's do a simple X and then let's go up to that other one and do some X's Yeah, I like that. It's like we've just added a button. You know when you pop a button on as a feature? It's those little details. I think it sort of brings pieces together. Oh, that's my story anyway. I wonder. Can we get two X's there? Do we just do the one, but we make him bigger? Let's just do the one and we make him a bit bigger. Oh, yeah, 
I love it. Yep. There you go. I'm happy now. And you're all saying, thank goodness. Okay, let's have a look. She's thinking again. Let's pull a couple of those little threads out so it's not easily out. No, that's it. That's it. I love it. Yep, I love it. So I'm just going to have a little tidy up here, but I'm going to keep a few of these key pieces out that caught my eye. So when I come back, they're ready to go again. Otherwise, they'll get lost. I don't know about a lot of these, but having said that, I just included some of them. So maybe indigo will work, but just in morsels. So it doesn't feel like I'm being overpowered by it. That's sort of how I feel about the indigo. All right, I've got a big day in front of me. I've got to do groceries and I've got to do some housework and I've promised myself that I'll get out of this room because it's just all consuming. So it is a slightly shorter video today. So sorry about that, guys. We only hit the 40 minute mark. What, what could we do? I could do another 20 minutes, couldn't I? Of course I could. Should I? I should go and do the housework. What if I work out a plain fabric for the base? I won't start another panel because I need time for that. Okay, I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to go and grab another one of those squares from on the other side of the room. I'll have a quick rummage through my fabric and I'll see if I can find a blue that tones in um, that could be the base. All right, guys, I'll pause the video, be back in a moment. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I found nothing in the quilt section, quilting fabric section. Everything either had that French feel about it or, yeah, just nothing was quite right. And then I remembered that I had this little piece of denim left from when I made a, a bag out of, a, you know, the top part of jeans when you add a strap and that for a young girl. And I've kept the legs from that project and I've just been using it from time to time um, in different projects. And I found that I can just fit this square on there. It will give it a nice strong base too. I haven't top stitched this particular square. So just bear with me as I add a few pins. I haven't quite finished all of the bases. So I'll just grab my dressmaking fabric scissors. I'm going to cut this out of here. I think it'll do the job. It's nice and thick. It's nice and dark. Okay, I might just keep it in amongst our things because you never know, it might be a little patch somewhere. Um, I don't want to get too much denim into it because it's not a denim-y project, but I think on the base I can sneak a bit in. It does have a bit of a stretch too, so I hope it doesn't get puckery on me. I will be stitching it down with thousands of rows of stitches. I'll just get rid of all those. So it'll be real boro stitching happening here. It'll keep me busy. Would be a lovely opportunity to do some fancy stitching on it, but it'll be a bit lost. I'm not going to spend the time doing that. Let's get some pins back into this. And I think I will we'll do a little bit of um, invisible stitch to try and secure it because it's a bit stretchy and I think it's going to wriggle around on me a bit. So I'll get that blue thread. Where is it? 
might just do across here and across here. That should really help to stabilize it. And then um, once that's done, I might get that chalk and draw myself a heap of lines. And then I don't have to think. And this will be a good little project for me to do tonight, sitting in front of the TV. Something to do. Don't have to think. That gets the next panel underway. So the next video for tomorrow, if there's nothing else pre-programmed in there, will be uh, another side. What I might do tonight too is sort of do a bit more research on this cherry blossom idea I've got. If I can't find anything and I need to maybe order a template or if I don't feel confident I can sketch something to embroider, we might just do, you know, some another panel that has another design on it. We might play with some more of those little templates that I've got in the pack. But we'll see how we go. Let's get this panel done with a heap of Boro stitch. I've cut the blue fabric a little bit bigger too than the piece underneath because I have a feeling with the stretch and the Boro stitch it might sort of bring it in a little bit. So I don't want to, you know, oh, I want blue. So used to cream. So now that that's running through there, I might take the pins out, make sure it's nice and flat before I do the next stitching. Okay. start up here nice quick way of securing it it's not going to go anywhere if I feel like it is wriggling a little bit I could come across the perimeter and just do a you know, around the outside job, but I definitely needed some stitching in the center here because it does have that elasticity in it. It's not like a, a normal jean. These are like stretch, stretch jeans. I think the, um, I think Mary Ann actually bought, my mate bought the jean. She had a request for a journal from one of her colleagues and it was for a teenage girl and the mum wanted um, a jean theme to the cover so she picked up a pair of children's pants and she used a bit and then I commandeered the top of it and made a bag for a girl and then sort of from the knees down was left and um it just stayed here in my craft room and I've been nibbling away at that pair of jeans. I think she got them new from Kmart for like $5 in the kids section. And it's just been such a beautiful piece of fabric. To go and buy some denim off the roll. You know, you do have to navigate seams and not everything is square like if you went and bought half a metre of denim. But the colour is really good. I always have a bit of a wander through the jean section at the op shops, but I sort of never really see the colour I want. You always can get that washed out denim look. But I like that crisp, dark blue, indigo tone. So you often find that, yeah, you just buy a new pair of jeans and just buy them in the kids section. So they're nice and cheap. And... Um, you might be lucky, you might walk down. Actually, the other day I was in an op shop 
and there were a pair of jeans at the corner of my eye. They were on a display and they were the most beautiful, soft pink. Like they'd obviously been worn a while, so it had that really pastel pink tone about it. And then I got sidetracked, forgot all about them and left. But they keep popping up in my brain. It was just, oh, so pretty. I thought, what a lovely morsel of fabric to have for, you know, shabby chic and you want something with a bit of texture. It would be beautiful. I can see this is going to fray to this fabric, so we'll need to make a decision on how I treat the edge to, I guess. So I'm carrying around the edge here. I just had thread left, so as you do, you keep going. I'll be able to trim this back a little bit too because I did cut it a little bit bigger. So I'll worry about that at the end. I know my base is six and a half by six and a half, but I would say this square is a fraction bigger, but it's all good. Just wasn't sure how it would behave under stitching. But I think by doing this invisible stitch, I probably could have made it quite accurate and it's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna sit nicely. You can see where I've been now with my invisible stitch. moved a little bit so it's a bit bit neat this side and then I've got a bit of excess so it did wriggle a bit won't now that I've got it all stitched okay so we've got about 10 minutes left so let's just quickly get this done and then I'm going to grab that chalk and draw some lines on because I want my boro stitch to be as true as I can to the elegance that they are. I know it doesn't really need to be straight straight but why is everything slipping? Everything's moving here. <laughs> Oh, gee. Speed stitching, this is what I'm doing. That's good. It's nice and secure. <clears throat> That is not going anywhere. I'd be pretty confident I could trim that back to the actual size it's meant to be, to be honest. It's sitting really well. Okay. Now, what I want to do is grab that little pencil and draw some little lines now I'm hoping oh hang on that's the edge that needs trimming no nope. I'm gonna trim it now that way I don't run my stitch off and over the edge let's just trim it then I know it's done it's definitely not going to go anywhere And then I can probably run my boro stitch around the end of the piece when I get there, which will help with the fraying issue. Won't hurt. Okay. 
beautiful. Now, oh, we could be fancy and draw a line there, draw a line there and do stitching in each one. <coughs> oh. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. Let's just see how we go. With just one line here. Nope. not the easiest thing to do so if you were a tailor making a denim jacket you must have been cursing the day that stretchy fabrics came back into came into fashion I can see my line like if I was drafting a pattern you'd certainly would What would be the middle? 16 and a half, so eight and a quarter. Mm, where am I heading with this? She's, you're all saying, I'm just going to draw some lines. I'm just going to take a moment before we get too far into the stitching. Just humor me. Mm. Oh boy, oh boy. You know what's gonna happen. She's reaching for some of these thingy me jiggies. Do I do do that in the bottom? <gasps> Yes, bandits like, there she goes. She's off on a tangent. Let's just have a little look at this. Just, just a little look into it. Get it open. You know what'll happen? This will end up on the side of the bag. It's supposed to be the bottom of the bag. Oh, for goodness sakes. The girl is going off on a tangent again. See, because I did those lines, I can line that template up. My pen is not doing me any favours, my pencil. I probably need to find a pen. Maybe the little chalk guy here is just not going to do it. A, the fabric is wriggling underneath, so he's not finding a, a line. Yeah. Hmm. I think I need to go out and about and see if I can improve my system. There would be something out there that I could be using. In the meantime, I'm going to take a chill pill. Do we just borrow stitch this in? I'll leave it as the base. Or do we get fancy pants here? Who knows? I'm going to leave it at that, guys. I need to mull all this over. And um, I think I need to do a little bit of pen research. I'm sure you guys have already written in comments different um, suggestions for a pen. Um, but I'm pre-filming all of this. So until the video goes up and you guys watch it, then you comment. It's too late. I've already... Um, filmed ahead so I can't use your tips and hints at this stage but I can use this as a reason to go out and about so I'm going to say goodbye stay tuned I'm going to go and see what pen I can find and then have a think about this panel let's just not call it a base at this moment let's just 
think about it. All right, guys. <laughs> See you later. Bye.